Hi, I'm Kent. In this video, I'm going to try making glazes for the first time. So, so far in my pottery journey, I've been using store-bought glazes and they've been working pretty well. However, they're not the cheapest and they're really meant to be brushed on. I've learned that they've had certain additives in there to help keep things in suspension that makes it easier to brush, which is great, but I haven't been brushing my glazes on. I've been either dipping them or pouring the glazes on. So I really don't need those additives. By making my own, I should also have a lot more control over the glaze itself. Now, glaze chemistry is a very complicated thing. I don't know if I really want to go that far down the rabbit hole, but there's a bunch of great recipes out there and some explanations about them that I think I have enough information to get started. The only other experiments I've done with glaze in the past are by using mason stains. So I got some of the clear base glaze from my local pottery shop. I then added some mason stain to try and get colors out of that. The mason stains worked great, but I want to try and do it the more traditional way now. So I'm going to try Joe Thompson's first five glades, also known as Old Forge Creations. He's got a great YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the description below, but I'm sure if you found my channel, you found his. He's created this glaze, and one of the key benefits is that the base ingredients, the base glaze itself, only requires five different ingredients. So this is the base glaze that he has, and I've acquired all these ingredients. And then everything over the total are the additives. This is what gives the glaze different you know, colors, for instance, except for bentonite. Uh, bentonite, from what I understand, helps keep the different particles in suspension better. But titanium dioxide is an opacifier, so it should make the glaze go from clear to opaque. And then I'm thinking in particular opaque white. I went ahead and calculated this for a 100 gram batch. I think I might do a little bit more than that. And Joe recommends doing about 90 grams of water to 100 grams of base material. So I'll start there as well. So this is the first glaze I'm going to mix up. And the second one is basically the same recipe, only it has cobalt in it. So cobalt carbonate. That should give this very pretty blue color, which to me looks pretty awesome. So if you look at these side by side, they are all exactly the same. The titanium dioxide is the same, the bentonite is the same. The only difference here is this has 1% by dry weight of the cobalt carbonate. So I'm going to mix up two batches, one with just the regular base glaze and then one with the cobalt in it. We'll then dip some test tiles and fire them and see what it looks like. All right, and here are all the materials for the base glaze. So first off is silica, just hanging back here. This is the stuff that you really, really don't want to get in your lungs. Then here is the nepheline cyanite, the ferrofrit, the EPK is hanging out down here, whitening, and then that it is the titanium dioxide, which is the opacifier and the bentonite, which I already explained. So clearly I have uh, more than enough to do a 100 gram test batch. Hopefully this will all work out and I will put these ingredients to good use. I have a couple of my containers here hanging off to the side that I just washed out. I think I'm going to make up larger than 100 grams. I really probably need a smaller container, but I'm going to use my immersion blender to make sure everything's really, really well mixed up, which means I need enough liquid in there to mix it up. So I think I'm going to measure these out in pairs and just go top to bottom. So to do that, I will first make some room. All right, I think I got everything set up here. I'm going to be wearing my respirator since this is nasty, dusty stuff. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to do a 300 gram batch. So all of the numbers in the recipe, I just need to multiply by three. That was the silica, now for the ferro frit. I need, let's see, 25 times three, so 75 grams of this for each batch. All right, 60 grams for each batch of the nepheline silate. Okay, 30 grams of the whitening. All right, 
so that is all for the base glaze. This one needs the cobalt carbonate. I need three grams of that. All right, last up, I need to add water, so 270 grams in each of these. All right, that's all the dusty stuff. I'm gonna do a quick wipe down of my bench here to get all that dust as well. Now I'm going to blend these up really well. Starting to look like glaze. All right, there's an initial mix. So I can go straight from here to here because this one is just the base glaze. This one's the additive. I cannot go the other direction. I'd contaminate my glaze. All right, there is an initial mix of both of these. There are still a few things floating around to them, so I'm gonna let them sit and hydrate for a little while. All right, I just mixed those up again. I think they're in good shape. Another way I could have done this is I could have put in the six batches into just this one container, added the water, and then poured half of it into here, and then added the uh, cobalt into here. The trick is making sure that the water amounts are right. By measuring just the dry ingredients, I made sure I could get that exactly right. From what I've read, if I just use the immersion blender, this is probably good enough. I think the old fashioned way of mixing it by hand, you really want to run it through a sieve. But I think I'm gonna live on the risky side and go ahead and try it. I can always sieve it in the future if it doesn't work out right. All right, so I've got some test tiles and I'm not afraid to use them. So this is just the base. I'm going to dip this one in, I don't know, probably two thirds of the way. And reading some of the comments from Joe, one of the problems is not applying the glaze thick enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and do that. That's the base. Here is the cobalt, which should be the pretty blue. And since I have the glaze out and I only have these two, I'm gonna try layering them. Now this is just the base glaze, so it should just thin it out or make it, I don't know, more runny. I'm not exactly sure, but I figured I'll try it, I have the test house. So this one I'm gonna put the base on first. And then this one, the cobalt on first. One thing I've noticed about the glazes I've mixed from dry powders is that they dip much, much better. The glazes from the store that I bought, the pre-made glazes, they dip, but they take forever to dry. I think that's part of the additive, so it makes it easier to brush on. All right, so these are the two test tiles. So this one is just the plain base glaze. This one's with the cobalt. So far, these are the same. Now I'm gonna swap these around. I'm gonna dip just the top part here into the cobalt and then vice versa. All right, the plain glaze and then the layer glaze. We'll see what these look like. I'm gonna let them dry and next glaze firing, these will go in and we'll see how they work. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and lid these up and label them and you guys will get to see the results now. And here's the result of my firing. So this one here is just the base glaze. It went on really nice and fired very well. And here's the cobalt. It broke a little bit over the edges. I can see why Joe goes and puts his little slip dots on his pieces so that he gets more of that breaking effect. On this plain test tile, it doesn't really show up too much, but it's really nice. These are just layering the glaze. So this one here has the base glaze on first, and then I overlaid the cobalt on top, and it you know, got a little bit thinner. It's breaking a little bit more on the edges. And this one, the opposite order. Getting, again, a little bit more variation. It's a little bit hard to pick up on camera. These glazes are super glossy. 
So I'm, I'm very pleased with these. I think it was fun to kind of mix up my own glaze from scratch. As I mentioned earlier, this is my first time doing that. And since I had some room in the test kiln, I went ahead and glazed a pot as well. So this one has the cobalt I just dipped on the outside. And then on the inside, I poured the base glaze and some of the cobalt leaked in when I was dipping it. And so this is actually a very thin layer of the cobalt over the base glaze. That's a very, very rich color. I think it's very cool. I am looking forward to using these glazes. I will start putting them on some pots. There's also a bunch of other glazes basically in this family that Joe's crafted. And so I'm gonna try looking at those as well. Basically adding different uh, ingredients into the base glaze to create different variations of these. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know down below. Thanks.